I'm Tom Rowland, and this is the Tom Rowland Podcast. Hey everybody, welcome to the show today. Today we've got a really amazing show with a really amazing guest. I had the um, good fortune to be put in touch with a young lady by Paul Fizzicaro, our web designer. Um, he put me in touch with this young lady who he saw a, a news report on, on the local news about her and the work she was doing with uh, kids who are terminally ill, kids who are disadvantaged in some way, young girls, all kinds of kids that need a little need a little opportunity. And she has dedicated her life to helping young kids. And the work that she has done through fishing is really some of the most motivational, inspirational work that I've seen anyone of any age do. Now, when you hear this, uh, this interview, you will be as surprised as I am that this young lady is 17 years old, while many other 17-year-old uh, teenagers, girls or boys, are living their life um, in pursuit of much different things. This young lady has uh, really, really tried to help as many people as possible, and she is doing that. So I don't want to tell you too much about her story before this podcast, but I am really proud to have been able to do a, a television show with her and also this podcast where she can tell her story. And her story is motivational and inspirational. Today's episode is brought to you by Waypoint TV. Waypoint TV is an online streaming platform featuring the best hunting and fishing content available. You can see over 2,000 episodes from 60 of the best producers in the business. Go to waypointtv.com and find out how you can see all of this content on any device, anytime, anywhere you'd like to see it. Waypointtv.com, completely for free. Now, we are going to start this podcast with Chaston Whitfield. So without waiting any longer, I want to introduce you to this inspirational young lady, Chaston Whitfield. So, Chaston, how are you today? Good, how are you? Did you have a good day? Yes. All right. Very good day. My hand's still shaking a little bit. It is? Bit. Why would your bit. hand be shaking? I didn't get my butt kicked, but I kicked some fish's butt. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. Yes, you did. You uh, you did a great job today. We caught a couple Thank of you. permit, a couple of black tip sharks. Had a giant hammerhead come up and almost eat your eat your bait. <laughs> that was and scary. Uh, you did a great job. You did a great job. But tell us uh, tell us about how this whole thing came about um, and the work that you're doing that led you down here to fish with us. All right. So it all started when I was like third grade I think no first grade I saw a commercial on the TV it was like when Hurricane Katrina or something came by and there was a Red Cross commercial and there was this little boy who was like very thirsty and hungry mm -hmm. and he wasn't gonna last very long so I was like mommy I want to go help him so I ran in my room grabbed my piggy bank a whole dollar fifty cents in it ran to Red Cross gave him it and they were like what it, what are you doing? And I was like, I want to give my money to you guys to help the little boy on TV. And my mom explained it. And they're like, oh, that's awesome. So the news found out about that. The news did a report on me. And I was like, oh, my goodness. I'm, a, I'm famous now. <laughs> and so then um, I heard of another story of a little boy named Big Ben. And he had a brain tumor. And his dad was a fireman. And at the time, Big Ben was the same age as my little brother. So I was like, oh, that's so funny. Like, we're the same family pretty much. And... Um, he was with St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, I want to raise money for him and help him. So we did. and But sadly, he passed. He had a brain tumor. So he it like got big and sadly he passed. But I kept raising money for them. And it was, I think I raised $8,000 in two or three years. Wow. Just doing and a garage sale. Garage sales. And what yep. kind of stuff were you selling? Just 
We had I sold my Hannah Montana poster. Yeah. I <laughs> sold we sold like a bunch of clothes and stuff. Um my grandma's friend had an orange farm, so she was like, Hey, why don't you come pick out oranges and stuff? We had five for a dollar. I remember that. I remember screaming it in the <laughs> in the road. So we sold oranges and all that. And then um it was summer of seventh grade. I was a cheerleader and my friends were a cheerleader as well they were a little better than me so they wanted they were doing all-star cheer Mm -hmm. and i was like well if they're doing it i guess i should do it so i can still hang out with them and stuff and i was not the best cheerleader so my mom's like i told my mom that and she goes why don't you try a fishing tournament so i did the fishing tournament i got first and i've been hooked ever since no wait you you just jumped into a fishing tournament well i've always been fishing you've always been fishing yes always been fishing. so who taught you how to fish my mom did, and okay. my dad gave me a couple tips, like don't run into markers and stuff. <laughs> He's the Captain Obvious But one. your mom's a fisherman. Yeah. She yeah, fishes them sometimes. Okay. But sometimes yeah. <laughs> or every time? Mostly every time. Yeah. Well, Most women have time. a tendency to do that. I yeah. have guided a lot of women, and um, almost all the time, especially out west. Um, Rocky Mountains, I was a trout guide out there. And so we had River Runs Through It, that movie came out, and mm-hmm. there were tons of people that wanted to fish. And so a lot of boyfriend, girlfriend, a lot of husband, wife would come out there, and almost every time, almost every time, the woman outfished the man. That's De- funny. Regardless of the experience level, almost every single time that happens. Wow. So women, women are great fishermen. They yeah. really are. Someone said that we're so patient and stuff, I guess, like we're used to waiting and we, I don't even know. I'm you like, think that's what it is? Someone said that and I <laughs> noticed like with me and my brother, like I am a little more patient. He's like, okay, let's do this now. Yeah. And my dad, but I don't know. I don't know. The fish doesn't yeah, know Yeah, it's funny because are. honestly, um, females have a more natural inclination to being good at fishing. But really? it's a it's a typically male dominated sport. Mm-hmm. But honestly, girls are better. They are. They're better <laughs> at it. And I have clinical research to show it. Like <laughs> out of a out of a hundred trips with with a man and his wife, the out the the wife outfishes the husband ninety seven to one. You know ninety seven to three. You know there are the occasions where where the guy outfishes the girl, but mm-hmm. rare rare so anyway we'll get back to your story so you um you you won this fishing tournament yes i won this fishing tournament which one was it it was oh gosh it was the fire charity tournament okay so the money went to um children's burn camp so um after that tournament i fished another one and my mom goes why don't you try to like incorporate like what you did with saint jude's like giving the money giving the money to them why don't you do that like with the tournament winnings and i was like okay that's a good idea so i fished in um a second tournament i think it was fire charity the next year so when you're fishing in these tournaments do you have your own boat or or what at this point you're what 15 years old i think i was 14 14 i was 14 and i used to babysit um there was like this little pizzeria place down the road for me and we used to go there all the time It was called village idiot Mm. And it was so good. Good name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, they had a little boy, and I babysat him for like three, four months straight. And I saved all that money and bought myself a little 13 or 14 foot Carolina skiff with a half tower. Nice. So that was my officially my official first boat. Okay. So I fished out of that. Me and two other girls. So it was packed. Like <laughs> that boat was like sinking by the time we got back. And so that's a boat that you went out of. That was the first boat, yeah. And did it have a live well? It had a live well. It wasn't alive. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was a dead well. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But um, a lot of duct tape was in that boat mm-hmm. to help um, hold the live well together. But, yeah, it had a live well. It had cup holders. It we it fit a bean bag in the front of the boat. It was. It had um, those little gas tanks in the back. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we would have. I would have one with. I would have three i would have two on each side and then one in the middle just in case it ran out of gas right. which it did a lot <laughs> so i have to call my dad I'm like hey we ran out of gas again so he would come bring me gas and it was a good little boat so you so you're fishing out of that little boat with two friends yes and 
you just win this fishing tournament? How do you know where to go? What do you, you were obviously fishing quite a bit in preparation for this. I wasn't allowed out of Palmasola Bay, which is okay. where I live. I wasn't yeah. allowed out of Palmasola Bay, so I was always like paddle boarding and stuff. And I would see charter captains and spots and I would like recognize it and be like, oh, what are they doing? Huh. And I would go fish over there and catch redfish and trout and snook. It was crazy. But I didn't really know what I was doing, to be honest. Yeah. I was just throwing fish out there. I was throwing shiners out there. Yeah. And <laughs> hoping then, for the so best. So this tournament that you're this one that was particularly big for you, this this one that we're talking about, mm -hmm. that was a redfish tournament or it what? was just inshore, it was redfish, okay. snook, trout. And so fighter. catch and release tournament, do you have to take pictures and bring them back or it depends on the fish. I think snook was out of season then, so I think we had to take pictures of the snook and um but i think everything else you could keep because okay. some of them they did by weight mm -hmm. like snapper and flounder they did by weight so so that's that's kind of funny um i have a friend that grew up down here and he had a uh he had a john boat an aluminum john boat and his dad told him that he was allowed in this one particular area just like you're saying you weren't allowed out of the mm -hmm. bay well he was allowed to go anywhere in this one little area and everything was going great until his dad found dolphin fillets in the freezer. <laughs> like mahi? Yeah. He took his John boat out and caught, caught mahi, and that was the wow. end of his freedom. <laughs> his Busted. dad was like, you do not take this John boat out to the, to the <laughs> reef and catch dolphin. That um, was so funny. So I don't know if you ever took, it, took your boat out. You were probably minded your... There's this little island, like, right on the mouth of Palmasola that is... I technically call it Palma Sola, mm -hmm. but it's not in my parents' book, but it isn't mine. I would take it out and go by there, but now she knows. No, Sorry. No. Love you, She's Mom. She's right here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. So you win this tournament, and what happens? We win the tournament, and we get the giant check, and um, I lean over to the guy with the microphone. I said, hey, we're going to give it back, and he, like, stops and like turns it off and looks at me and goes what i said we're going to give the money back he goes why i'm like i don't know because it f it feels right and like i was like i want to give the money back to the burn to the burn camp i'm like i don't know what i'm going to do with it by a doll like i was like 14 i was like i'm not going to do anything with it i still get money from doing chores i hear you take it so he turned back turned the mic back on he, he was like okay um Captain Chaston just said that she wants to give the money back to the burn camp and everyone, it just got quiet. And I was like, is this, is this like bad? And everyone just started clapping and stuff. Yeah. And it was weird. So, weird. so you're 14, um, you know, that's a lot of money. What? $700? Is that what it you said? It was like 300 I So $300. That could buy a new iPhone. That could buy a could lot of stuff. And that didn't <laughs> cross your mind that you wanted to do that. Went you, right over my head. You want to, you want to give the money back immediately. That's, that's your first thought. Mm -hmm. So you're a giver. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't so know where I got it from, but. <laughs> so, so you give that back and that starts you down this path. And tell us, tell us about that. Like you, you've gone down this path of, of giving it back and uh, doing a little bit. And is that giving you kind of more motivation to do more? Um, after that tournament, I got a bigger boat. I got a 24 foot Skeeter and I was like, well, why don't I get a bunch of my, f me and my friends together and do this? Like it was called a super bowl of, a super bowl of tournaments okay. back at my house, back at my plate down where I live. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, so I was like, let's just fish it to fish it. And there was like all the fishermen, like all the guys from my school were fishing it and stuff. So we were like really scared going in because it was just a team of all girls, like first team ever to fish that tournament. It and was called the Crossway. And girls are all how old? We were 15 okay. at the time. 15, so I think four 15-year-olds show up at this tournament? Yep. Okay. I think one was maybe even 13. But um, So we all show up. And they had like a best dress thing, so we all walk up there in like our dresses and stuff, and everyone's like, Are, "Okay, who 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 paid these girls to go up there?" Like that's so mm -hmm. funny. And then, so no one really took us seriously. And then we got um to the weigh-in afterwards to weigh on our fish and stuff, and we brought well we couldn't keep it, but we um, people were like behind us and stuff. We loaded our pictures. We had a 33-inch redfish, 34-inch snook. We had a bunch of snapper, a bunch of flounder, like. I think it was a 23-inch um, 
trout and they, they, their jaws, I kind of, I could see the reflection of them <laughs> in the computer and they were like this. And I was like, yeah, remember you guys were laughing at us last night, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, it was awesome. And then we won that one. We won, um, under six juniors, under 16 and, um, the ladies division. Okay. So all together, I think it was like $700. We gave all that back. Wow. Yeah. And so again, you just got this new boat. Then there, you, you doesn't cross your mind that you want to spend that money on something. You you just prefer no. to give it back. Yeah, it's awesome. Okay, <laughs> I so didn't even think about it. So I'm asking these questions. I already know the answers, but but I just find it very interesting that other girls your age are spending money on whatever whatever they can find an iPhone, yes. makeup, whatever, uh, just frivolous stuff, <laughs> and you're making real money. Mm-hmm. And you're giving it back. Yes. And so, what does that do for you? What did what? Where does it take you after that tournament? It makes me happy. Yeah. And other people see it, and they invite me to. It helps me go fishing more because other tournaments see it. Other charities are like, "Hey, maybe we should do a tournament so this girl can give us money back." <laughs> <laughs> I've had a couple of those, but um, some fishing companies like um, Rod and Rail, like Pin and them, have recognized me doing some of that and been contacting me like hey you want to try out some of our products we've seen you win a couple tournaments Great. love for us to have um love for you to have our name on your shirt when you give the money back and stuff so it's helped me like grow in the fishing world i guess mm-hmm. yeah. is a good word yeah yeah and so what companies are you working with now oh goodness um i just got signed with yellowfin okay they're building me a new t- uh, 21 foot boat we know some people up there too yeah wheelchair <laughs> accessible so that's hopefully. the that's awesome it's so a new project so what does that mean what is the boat gonna do that is more wheelchair accessible than what you already have hopefully we're not positive if it'll if it'll work or not but we're still trying to like get all electronic and stuff it's gonna have like hydraulics or something in the floor of the boat so it's gonna raise up to the deck of the boat so the kid can get on the boat easier uh-huh. so i have to lift them up and set them down because some of them are like 16 years old and they're a bit heavier than a little four-year-old yeah, yeah. so it's gonna so they're gonna get on that little hydraulic like platform and then we're gonna lock them in and it's gonna lower back down and then we'll like back them up to the tower kind of because mm-hmm. they'll have a little half tower so the wheelchair will fit between the legs of the tower okay and lock them in so They'll be able to, like, fish from the front, fish from the back, fish from the, like, very, like, the bow of the boat. Nice. So they'll get closer to the fish. Nice. So I'm really excited for that. So so that kind of takes us into jumping a little bit ahead of, so you're giving this money back and you're winning these tournaments and you're doing some good. But then you decide at some point that you're going to to try to have a little more personal interaction with, with somebody. What's the first... Um, opportunity you had to take somebody fishing um i did a fishing camp on a pier uh last summer and there was the the um owner well the lady who i was in contact with for the camp her son has spina bifida Mm -hmm. and um he was in a little little wheelchair like maybe like two feet wide he was four at the time he was so cute and um we went fishing for like three days And, um, we were on the pier and no one was catching a thing. And he was like, Miss Chaston, can I go over here and fish? And I was like, sure, go for it. He was in the center of the pier, the front of the pier, like the center of attention. Everyone's watching him. He casts out there, sits there, and then he catches a snapper and he's like, I caught a fish. I caught a fish. He starts doing donuts in the wheelchair. (laughs) I have a video of it. It is the most coolest thing ever. That like made my day. So then I went up to my mom afterwards when I got back home and I was like, so look at this video. And I showed her it and she's like, you need to take that kid fishing. I was like, do you think I can? She's like, probably. Sadly, he didn't fit in my boat, but I took um, one of my friends. He's a charter captain, Captain Nate. Okay. He, we put him in his boat because his awesome. boat fit the little wheelchair. Uh-huh. So we took him fishing and he caught snapper after snap. He was a snapper master. Yeah. He called himself. <laughs> so <laughs> that was, and um, after that, I was like, maybe we should do like, do more of these so now i'm partnered with um children's dream fund which is kind of like make a wish and they send me kids like every week i try to take a kid fishing every weekend sometimes it's two or three kids at the same time or or like three separate trips like one like we'll do like four hours like we'll do eight to like one and then another one one thirty to four or something 
and then Sunday we'll do like one, like eight to noon or something. Okay. So we'll, we try to do that. We try to do that. Yeah. Well, I mean, you you probably are running a pretty busy schedule. You're you're <laughs> trying to be in in school. Yeah. You have so it, do you have a foundation? What is what is it? How how are you organized right now? Um. I have a planner in my backpack that <laughs> says, skip school, you're going fishing, <laughs> skip school, you're going fishing. <laughs> but I have um, my mom, I call her my momager. She also uh, helps me a lot <laughs> with all this stuff. And, but yeah. So how does the school react to what you're doing? School, um, this is my third year in high school. First two years, they were like, okay, you need to stop skipping so much school. But um, I actually signed out the other day because I got nominated for Bay News 9, which is um, like a news channel down where I live, and it was Hero of the Month. Okay. So the office lady kind of knew me because I signed in and out a lot. And so she was like, oh, what is this for? And she was like reading the note. She goes, Hero of the Month for Bay News 9? And I said, yeah. And she goes, aren't you the Fisher girl? Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, that's me. And she's like, oh, my gosh, that's awesome. What are you doing again? So I explained it to her, and she goes, Anytime you need to get out, just come to me and I'll let you get out. I was like, nice. Thank you. <laughs> and okay. I talked to the principal and he was like, yeah, if you need to get out of school early to go to one of those, no problem. Just tell the front office that I said it's okay. I was like, I got pr- approval from the principal. Wow. I said, yeah, but yeah, they're, they're get They're much better now. Okay. It's really good. All right. So, so you're also telling me, and one of the reasons why, um, I was most interested in, in, uh, contacting you is because uh i mean we talked about I, the the guy that um that does our websites paul fisicaro he lives right down here in marathon he actually saw the salt strong uh piece that mm-hmm. they did on you and those guys from salt strong are friends as well and um paul sent me this um link and he said you know what this this she would be a great guest on your show this looks like something that would be really cool that you might be interested in. So I watch it, and I'm like, wow, that's really cool. <laughs> like, this girl is, is a junior in high school, same age as my son, um, really helping a lot of people. You're taking a lot of people um, who probably would not have the chance to go fishing. You're taking them fishing, and that's doing some amazing things in their life. Um, sure. So I'm very excited about that. But then... As and I'm and I'm interested in in contacting you for for that alone, but then as we talk, you're telling me that you're also doing some other stuff with with young girls. Now I have a 13 mm-hmm. year old daughter, so that sens- that's sensitive to me, like young girls and and what's going on at that time in in girls' lives. It's a difficult time. Oh yeah. And for so sure. you're doing some work with young girls on on confidence issues mm-hmm. and and what is that like um like i've had girls like message me on instagram and like twitter and stuff and they're like hey i just saw your instagram page thank you so much you helped me so much um i'm doing football now or something mm-hmm. like i have one girl actually message me and go thank you so much i saw your page i'm gonna play football now or right. now i'm the quarterback or something i was <laughs> like well dang okay that's awesome yeah. But then I also get some that are like, I'm a little overweight and people keep making fun of me. I don't want to like, some of them are about like, um, suicidal stuff. Oh, really? And I'm like, you should not do that. <laughs> so I tell them, I'm like, if you like doing something, like if you like chess, then just do chess. If someone doesn't like your body, then it's your body. You don't have to make yourself pleasable to other people make yourself pleasable for yourself like it's all you're you are about you Mm -hmm. not you're not about your other friends that are doing cheer or something you are about you doing fishing and um like um when I teach Girl Scouts and stuff there are some girls that come up to me and they're like I'm um like they just like come like some of them start crying like they're like I don't know what to do like I don't have any friends like I sit alone at lunch. And I'm like, well, go up and make friends. Like there's got, there's always someone who can help you. Cause like girls at like 13 and 12, like middle school, middle school changes a lot of people. And that's like middle school is like when you find like where you're like mm-hmm. your path, I guess. Yeah. And that like age, like group is like, girls are like 
stuck in like this little ball. Like they're they're afraid to do anything out of the box. They're scared to do anything out of the box. And that's how I was. But then I did that fishing tournament because I realized I'm like, you know what? I don't care what other people think. If it makes me happy, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. So it's a tough subject. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's and it's one that that it that more people need to be vocal about and helping mm -hmm. and that's really um what I was the most interested in. I mean, I I I appreciate very much what you're doing with Thank the you. with the kids, but the, you know, it really hit home with the with the daughter. So, you know, after spending the whole day with you, meeting your parents and 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 having a just a, a good day of fishing. Mm -hmm. You you strike me as somebody that just has tremendous self confidence. Thank you. Do you have you had that always? Nope. I <laughs> no. I um, Where does it come from? I honestly don't know. Like I was afraid when I was little I played soccer and I was a goalie and people would say, Chaz, get the goal, get the ball and I would start crying. Like if someone said my name I would start crying. Like I don't like being noticed. I don't like getting attention. I hate getting attention. Um, <laughs> but like, I don't know where the confidence came from. I guess I'm just, I don't know. Like if I do something that like my, like I'm still kind of friends with those girls and they'll, I'll hear them talk about me behind me. Mm -hmm. Like, oh my gosh, she's fishing again. And I'm like, you know what? That makes them mad. So I'm like, why does that make you mad? So then I go fishing and I don't know, I guess it's just like builds my self-esteem like look i'm not following like because it's four girls stuck together right i'm like i'm not following every move you're making i'm going off on my own like like i'm a leader i guess like look like i can do my own stuff mm -hmm. i don't have to have another girl walk with me to the bathroom or something like i don't know i guess just um the experiences i get are very like I had to talk in front of 400 people one day. Had you ever done anything like that <laughs> <Nope>. before? Nope. <laughs> I talked in front of my fifth grade class, and I was, um, I had to do a speech in front of my fifth grade class, and then I think seventh or eighth grade, eighth grade, nope, it was ninth grade. The ninth grade was the next time I talked in front of anyone, and there was the 400 people, so I got up there like shaking, like scared to death. And after that, I just got really like, I was like, hey, I can talk to 400 people. I can talk to one person. I got this. Yeah. But I guess it's just the experience. So when you get ready to talk to 400 people, do you prepare? Do you practice? What do you do? I do practice, but my mom says I'm really good at winging it. <laughs> She's like, just talk from the heart and just wing it. And I was like, all right. So I do have some little notes and stuff, but um, I mostly just wing stuff a lot. So these 400 people that you're talking to, uh, who, who, what, what kind of a... A group is this? It was a fishing tournament, um, and they wanted me to talk to everyone. It was the captain's meeting, yeah. and they wanted me to talk to everyone and tell them my story because they wanted other people to give money back. Mm -hmm. So they were like, well, maybe if you tell the story about you giving money back, maybe they'll do it. Did it work? I think it did. I'm not. I'm not positive. I don't remember like exactly how much, but I did. I do know a couple people gave some money back. So, th someone asked you, and you're what, 16 years old at this time? 15. 15 years old. They ask you, as a junior female angler, to stand up in front of the entire <laughs> fishing tournament, 400 people, probably middle-aged dudes. Yeah. And tell your story. It was very, when when I got the message, I showed my mom, and she was like, why don't you do it? And I was, like, just, like, staring at it going, I'm going to pass out. Like, in front of all these people, <laughs> I'm just going to go, boom, and just eat the floor. I was, I had a notebook, and I read it, wor no, not word for word, but I memorized most of it. And towards the middle, like, towards the beginning, I'm like, hi, I'm Chaston Whitfield. I am 15 years old. I like to fish. And I, then um, I looked up and saw the people, and some of them, weren't really looking at me because they were like hanging out with their friends and stuff but the people in the front were so I would look I was staring at a tree the whole time <laughs> and I closed the book and I was like so this is what I do this is how I got started and I just talked like it was really scary at first but then once you kind of like get comfortable up there you're like oh I got this like if I just stare at a tree it's good like if yeah. I don't look at someone in the eye it's okay but I've gotten better where I can look at people in the eyes now mm-hmm yeah, well, that's awesome. And so, so 
you've got all this stuff going. You're talking to young girls. You're you're taking kids that are that are handicapped or disabled or 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 disadvantaged in some way. You're taking them fishing. You're giving a personal touch. Um, you told me today that you're selling T-shirts. Yes. Um, your own T-shirt. Is that your own design? Did you draw it? Um, I did not draw it, but one of my friends is like a – she draws like cool like bubble letters and stuff, mm -hmm. and I was just messing around one day, and we were in class one day bored, so I was like, hey, you want to draw something that says like chastination with like a fish, and she came up with something, and it was similar to like the logo that I have now. Mm hmm but then I got, um, so she made that, and that was our first logo. And um, then I got with Sign Zoo, and they're like, okay, that's a little, like, kiddish. Yeah. That was, like, when I was 15, and now I'm, like, 16, almost 17. They're like, we need something more mature for you. So I'm like, uh, oh, okay, I can't draw, so I don't know what to do. So they're like, here, let's l let me handle it. And they made a bunch of logos and stuff, and they sent me that because, like, I love catching tarpon, mm -hmm. and – it's pink because I, I like pink. <laughs> I used to hate pink, but now I really like it. And um, and they were and I also throw the cast net. So they're like, let's do something with like a cast net, maybe something with a tarpon. So they threw all those things together and made the logo that we have now. Cool. A, a long, hard process, but we yeah. got it. <laughs> yeah, I like it. So how much are those shirts? They are twenty dollars right now. So twenty bucks. Yes. And if you sell those shirts, and where does that money go? It goes um, to, it turns, it goes straight into gas money. It turns into gas money for us to take these terminally ill kids fishing. So I'm not good with asking for money, <laughs> so I just say it's gas money, and we're in desperate need of it. Yeah. Because <laughs> I think I have 17 kids I'm supposed to take fishing, and I only have $700, and it's 100 bucks a kid. 100 bucks a kid. Yes. So it's like 10 shirts will be one kid. Okay. Well, we're going to see if we can help you to get to sell a few of those shirts. And, and awesome. uh, I'm going to make a donation tonight to, uh, to, to make sure that you take at least a couple more kids fishing. Um, so that, that's awesome. So where is it that – what are your goals for this? Like where are you trying to go with this? What do you want to do with it? I want to have my own TV show doing exactly what I do, like – Taking the terminally ill kids fishing, I want to put that on TV so parents and, like, other kids and, like, anyone who sees it will be like, wow, I kind of, that makes me, like, like, just, like, smile on the kids' faces. Like, you're not helping the kid. They're helping you. Right. It's more of them helping you because they're, because you, like, look at them and they're smiling. Like, they have a, like, life-threatening disease and it just went out of their head. Like, it's out of the picture right now. They are... They're fighting – yesterday they were fighting for their life. Right now they're fighting for the fish. Mm -hmm. And that might be the first fish. That might be the last fish they ever catch. So it's just, like, an amazing feeling. And I want, like, other people to be able to have that and see it. So if, like, a parent um, sees the my TV show – and they see their kid, like, on an Xbox or something. They're like, huh, maybe I should take my kid out fishing. Mm -hmm. Like, there was one um, one saying I saw, and it was, T tackle boxes, not Xboxes. Yeah. My little brother, he's 10. <laughs> he, used, he has an Xbox. He's on it pretty much all of the time when he gets home from school, between that and basketball. So I've been trying to get him out fishing. Yeah. And he's been, he would threw the cast net this weekend at yeah. the expo. He was teaching kids how to throw the cast net. He's like, sissy, I really like this. I want to do this now. I'm like, go for it. But, yeah, just to get um, people to see and have the experience of a kid or anyone who has never caught a fish before. Mm -hmm. I want to get that so out there. So do you have um, – have you thought about this TV show much? Not really. I thought – I've thought about what I want to do I don't know a thing about starting it I don't know what to do to start it I am clueless when it comes to tv shows because I never really I don't have that much experience what kind one. of experience do you have I've been on them How, what what shows have you been on um I've been on Glenn Plaus Average Angler like it was like a little interview type thing mm -hmm. I didn't go fishing but I've been on real time and I've been on this one now, yeah. <laughs> and 
I've been on like news channels and stuff, so it's mostly just interviews. I've only fished on TV twice. Okay. So first time was very scary. This mm. time I was a little more relaxed and more talkative. The first time I did not talk at all. Yeah, that was like when I took my daughter on our show. She didn't say a word. <laughs> um, she caught a bonefish, and then we took her um, snorkeling. And I had the bright idea of taking some pizza out snorkeling uh, with us. So I, I took it with me. And then while we were underwater, I thought, well, I'll get all the fish to come to us by taking this pizza and taking it and ch chopping it up into little pieces. And the yellowtail snapper attacked us, these little <laughs> ones like this. And one of them <laughs> bit my daughter on her finger about oh. a millimeter or maybe an eighth of a millimeter. <laughs> And and that was it. <laughs> she shut down. <laughs> she That's shut funny. down. It was a terrible idea, and I don't know <laughs> why I did it. But I just thought I was going to enhance the experience by trying to get a few more fish over there. And it, it turned around, and it, it wasn't good. It was <laughs> not, well, not good at all. But she That's she uh, was very quiet on, on there. But I think your TV show idea is really good. Thank you. I think that you could definitely do it. And it reminds me of how um, we started our TV show. Um very simple. I don't have any background in, in this at all. None at all. And we have three TV shows, four TV shows, um, and have done even even more than that. Um, I was invited to a little tournament called the ESPN Great Outdoor Games. Um, and it was an invitation. So I got lucky to get that invitation. Well, I practiced really hard and it was a trout fishing competition. So um, went up there I got second place in the casting competition which gave you the um, choice the f guy who gets first place gets the first choice on the river first of, of the time of the day there was a morning session and an afternoon session and then there was the the beat so you could choose I want number five in the morning and so I got second choice and I made a really good choice and I caught the biggest fish and won the ESPN great outdoor games Wow. Before that, I had only been on one television show, and that was Shaw Grigsby's One More Cast. We caught barracudas down in Key West. Well, then I went up there, and I see all of this production equipment. And it's kind of funny because I actually met Hop that you, that you met uh, today, our producer mm -hmm. of Saltwater Experience. We ran into each other many times, and um, he was at the Great Outdoor Games. And Anyway, I see all this production, and I'm thinking, man, that is really cool. So when I come back home, I had this really interesting kind of story, kind of like you giving back the check. Um, I had a story that I was a Key West fishing guide that had just won this trout fishing competition in New York. And it doesn't sound like that should happen, right? So <laughs> yeah. I called up all of these um, television shows and said, hey, i got an interesting story for you. Come uh, trout fishing. I mean, a uh, saltwater guide goes up to this trout international trout competition and wins. And why don't you guys come down to Key West and I'll take you tarpon fishing. And pretty much everybody that I called actually took me up on it. And so in just a year or so, I was on 17 more television shows. So now I had been on Shaw Grigsby's and the Great Outdoor Games and then 17 or 18 more. And Rich and I then started doing um, redfish tournaments, which were fun sometimes, but it took me away from home, and I had two little babies at home, so it was really tough for me to be away from home. Hurricane Charlie comes over Key West, and my wife is in Key West with two babies, can't get out. I can't leave Louisiana to come down and help. She has to shelter in a fish house um, with that my friends own, and wow. it just really tore me up, and I just decided no more fishing tournaments. So I tell Rich, I'm done. I, you can have whatever sponsorship we've got. I don't care. I'm going back. I'll just be a guide. I don't need to do these tournaments anymore. So we start kind of talking all the way back and concepting what turns out to be saltwater experience uh, with the idea that we would just be uh, sleeping in our own bed and um, you know fishing here in the Florida Keys. So that's how Saltwater Experience started. But when it's when it got to the point of okay, well let's do a TV show. Now what do we do? <laughs> I just said, well, I don't know. I've been on like 18 of them. Doesn't look that hard. So I mean that's just how we got it started. So I mean you can you actually have more experience than you know, and you could totally get it going. Even though you're just 17 and but I happen to know a guy that knows a lot about TV 
through the school of hard knocks. That's <laughs> me. But I, I like your idea. <laughs> I, I'd be happy to help you with it, and and I think that it's it's really good. You Thank know, you. it's a it's a very cool thing, and you could make a big difference in a lot of people's lives. So you want a TV show, and yes. what about just the act of taking um, people fishing? How big do you want to see that get? I want to see it get really big. Well, I've never thought of it like I've never thought about me getting big. No, not you. Like just like what you're doing. Anything that I have associated myself with getting big, like I ha I am um, there was this one we fished that the tournament that we the first one that I ever fished, the fire charity, there was a team of girls. We me and my um girl my me and my team of all girls we fished it again like two years later and after the first year we fished it and then we see this this like team of like 14 15 year old girls and we're 16 and 17 now and we're like wait what like what are they doing here so then we go up to them and we introduce ourselves and like yeah we know who you are and we're like okay (laughs) and then they're like yeah we saw you on instagram and and my and we like to fish we're like hey let's do a tournament too and i was like you you guys saw us and now you're doing what we do and one of my one of the girls on my team she goes Chaz look it's a mini you it's a mini Sammy <laughs> it's a mini Olivia it's a mini me like she was just naming everyone off and it was it was really cool but it's also like crazy to think about that like we influenced that like someone saw us yeah. and was like hey let's do that because that apparently that was awesome so yeah. I was like oh cool we're cool now well you know I, I think that um a positive influence probably doesn't have the the immediate repercussions as a negative influence sometimes mm-hmm. does. Like people see somebody do something really stupid, and then thousands of people want to go do something really stupid immediately. Yeah. Um, but what you're doing is is great, not just for um, um, you know, just for 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 like what you're doing for these kids, but what you're doing for the sport of fishing is is really good. And I have long been an advocate of more women getting involved in fishing. I think that, that just like I said, I mean, I've witnessed it. Women are better at fishing than men that are. They just are. And, they, and I really don't understand why the sport is, uh, is so male-dominated and women don't participate in it. It's very intimidating. You think so? Yeah, like the first year, well, the first year I did that tournament, it was, um, I walked in and I saw all these older guys and all my, like these kids from school, like the fishermen from school. And I walked in with my mom and dad and my little brother and I sat down, they were just like staring at me. I heard them talking about me and I was like, all right, this is really like scary because yeah. <laughs> it's a 14 year old girl walking in the middle of a bunch of like 20 year old men just like staring you down going, what in the world is she doing here? It's very intimidating. Mm-hmm. And that fishing team, that other girls team, we were talking to them, and they're like, how do you guys do this? Like, this is scary. <laughs> like, there's a bunch of guys here. There's a bunch of boys here. And <laughs> one of the girls piped up, and she's like, and there's a bunch of cute guys here. How do you not, <laughs> like, freak out? I was like, I just, like, ignore them and just walk through them. Like, just move. Like, just push them out of the way. They're just people. They'll move. But it is a little intimidating. Yeah. But you get, kind of get used to it. Well, I saw it firsthand, too. When I first started guiding out west, and there was a um, – it was a, it was during the time of pre-River Runs Through It and then post-River Runs Through It. And at the time after the movie came out, the guiding industry and tourist industry in the western United States just exploded because of this one movie. It's a, it's a crazy how much it – how much an effect it had. But it just – it just exploded. And um, so the guy that I work for hired um, three women, uh, hired Lori Ann Murphy, who's very famous and has done an amazing thing with a project called Real Women, mm-hmm. and uh, Christy Ball and Kim Keeley. So we had three female guides, the only three female guides in the entire Teton Valley, and they all worked for our outfit. And so I watched them kind of struggle with lots of things, confidence issues mm-hmm. and whatever, and doing exactly what you you were saying. Look, I'm here. I'm supposed to be here. <laughs> I'm, 
And, and you know what? Their clients absolutely loved them. Mm-hmm. And they were terrific, and and they were fun to work with, and and I enjoyed it. And I've always thought there should be more. There should be more female guides. There should be more um, female anglers for sure. And um, so I I think it's very interesting. But that seems to also have a lot of um, of applications to life, like just of all things, whether you like fishing or 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 not. Like you get in an intimidating situation. It's it's pretty scary. <laughs> Well, I mean, there's lots of intimidating situations, public mm-hmm. speaking, um, going to a dance that you've, you, you know, you don't know anyone there, walking oh, yeah. into a party you don't know, where where there, you don't know anyone there, mm-hmm. uh, going to college for the first time, you have no idea, There's <laughs> you don't know anyone. So this experience, I would imagine, has prepared you for many, many of those opportunities. Yeah, like those awkward moments people have when they're like just standing there and just like don't know what to do. I've learned to just like go up and be like, so what's your name? How long have you been fishing? What do you fish for? What kind of boat do you have? Like that's how I make friends. I just ask them about them and you'll get people talking for like two hours. Especially at a fishing tournament, you start asking about boats. Oh, yeah. They'll go on. Like, well, I have this one, but I like this. I like this. I like that. I like that. I'll just go off. Yeah. But you learn how to. So that's get how over you do it. it at parties, too. Yeah. Right? Well, that's cool. So you also told me um, something else today that I thought was pretty cool, which was um, what, kind of tr- what kind of car do you drive? I have a 2014 1500 Silverado. Silverado. It's got a seven and a half inch lift on it. <laughs> it's got pink Chevy emblems. It's got a four by four stickers pink. I got um, rock lights that turn different colors, but I keep them on at pink. <laughs> um, what else is on that? That sounds pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that would make my son's truck look uh, look kind of small. Um, <laughs> well, that's cool. Well, I just love what you're doing. I think that I think that it's fantastic. Thank you. Um, I, how about telling everybody how they could help you? Where can they go? How do they find you? They can go to chastonwhitfield.com is my website. All my email, my Facebook, my Instagram is all on that. Or you can look up Chastonation on Facebook. And it'll have the same exact thing as my website. It'll have my Instagram, my Instagram Twitter, email, website, all that fun stuff on okay. it. Okay. And where do they make a donation? That would be on chastonwhitfield.com okay. where uh, you'd click on like shirts or I think it's like clothing or something and you click on that and then you can um, buy a shirt online. Buy a shirt. What if somebody just wants to make a donation? Do you have that you set make up? Make a donation. That would be through my email. All right. <laughs> yes, I, had to I think you're going to have to get this PayPal thing going. I, yeah. hear, I hear it's a thing. Um, all right. Well, hopefully people are going to come check you out. Uh, I'm very impressed with you. I think you did an awesome job. Plus, you're a really good fisherman. Thank really you. are. You're the real deal. You can bite <laughs> a fish. Great. You caught two permit today, two black tip sharks. You were not afraid of a 12 foot hammerhead on a spinning rod. I, was I will not afraid at no, all. No, you were not. I didn't you were not. Squeal I was or very anything. well. You did squeal. <laughs> you did scream and squeal both, and you stepped back off of the cooler at one point yeah. but that's okay um <laughs> so anyway it's been a very a, a real pleasure to get to know you Thank to you fish you with too. you today and to spend this time on the podcast i appreciate it i hope everybody will go and check her out she's got some really great stuff put a couple hundred bucks down what are you going to do with it anyway it's going to take two kids two hundred dollars is going to take two kids fishing and uh, that may have never gotten a chance to go fishing before so drop Drop a hundred, drop five hundred, drop a thousand. It's good. Chaston now has her 501c and she can accept donations. So if you would like to help her take more kids fishing, you can make a donation by visiting www.chastonwhitfield.com. Additionally, you can follow her on Instagram at Chastonation or Facebook at Chastonation as well. You can buy a t-shirt from her website, chastonwhitfield.com. And if you know a child who's in a wheelchair, has cancer, or another terminal disease who might not have a chance to go fishing, please contact Chaston through her website and let her know how to get in touch with the family.